Representative Bill Hager, you are the state representative for the Hampton County area. That's correct. Thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Glad to be here. So you were elected in 2020. Yes, my election was a um, kind of historical election for this area. I was the first Republican elected ever in Hampton County to the State House. I also represent parts of Colleton County, parts of Jasper County, and a little bit of Beaufort County. So I've got four counties, four county councils, four airports, four, four a little bit school delegations, <laughs> school boards that uh, I have to deal with. So it's been rather busy. So in terms of representing Hampton, representing the citizens, um, I know you've put a lot of work into helping the county get funds from the state, working on getting the state-led forensic audits into the budget this year. Um, I, you've been doing a lot of really good work behind the scenes. Yes, I, uh, I've been in Hampton County for 25 years, but I've been in the region for almost 40. As an engineer, I worked in a six county region down here. I uh, lived in Buford for 17 years and my job brought me to Hampton. Uh, so I've known this entire region uh, from uh, engineering perspective, working on economic development projects. Uh, very interested, I, as soon as I moved to Hampton, I, be, I joined the uh, Hampton County Economic Development Commission and then also became a member of the board of SCA, Southern Carolina Alliance. So I've been in the economic development game for a long time, uh, working on projects. So I, I know the region, I've been here a long time. I, again, I'm not a native either. I'm a transplant from a small town in North Carolina. As a matter of fact, uh, I, uh, I came from a town that's not too far from Mount Airy which is Mayberry. And so <laughs> I uh, uh, love the small town. Uh, we had opportunity to move back to Buford uh, in, 20, in 2007. And my wife and I love it here so much, we stayed and commuted. Uh, to, I had to take up some responsibilities back in Buford. But uh, we didn't want to move back. We love the small town atmosphere. Our children, grew up in a neighborhood where we could let them go. Everybody watched out for them. And we didn't have that in Buford and we certainly wanted to stay here uh, as, a, as community members here because we'd fall, fallen in love with our small communities here. Yeah. So Hampton, I mean, the, the county has run into a lot of budget challenges yes. uh, recently. Right. Um, and, you know, I think you know, I'm seeing a lot of movement from the citizens of Hampton to get more involved, to you know, really hold the county count, count accountable for for where their tax dollars are going, um, and that's a that's a good thing, right? We need we need citizens' involvement. I believe the county, uh, with the loss of the jobs from Nevermore, the county uh, continued spending, and this all goes back to 2015. And the county continued spending at a level that they could not afford based on the revenues they were not getting. Right. And uh, I think we've slowly drained our res resources trying to maintain a spending level that we cannot maintain until we get some economic development. Right. Is there, you know, in terms of economic development, um, you know, bringing in more jobs, bringing in, you know, more resources. Um, it's going to be a big part of digging Hampton County out of the hole that it is in right That's now. That's correct. We, we, cannot, we cannot fund the necessary services based on residential taxes. It's gotta be industrial taxes, industrial level taxes. We've got to, get some more development. And we've got some things coming. We've got the uh, Agriculture Technology Center is finally cranking up after COVID shut that down for a while. Uh, they're beginning to break ground down there for that and that'll be five to, to a thousand jobs. Uh, we have some manufacturing, but it's not a lot of jobs. It's a lot of automated manufacturing. So we've got to get some job, some manufacturing here that will be good paying jobs. Uh, that helps fund the, the tax base and uh, it helps uh, fund the, 
people's lives. I, I've always been a big proponent. I want our folks to stay here. We have so many people that have to drive out of county to, to work. It would be nice to have the jobs here so they could be home in the evening with their families, help raise their children, help with, you know, that the education will only improve if we can get families involved with helping with that education. Right. So, and if they're not home, they can't. Right. Right. And, you know, that is, you know, part of the thing is, you know, you get, you know, you have the education here has improved and, you know, you're getting more individuals, these, these educations, getting, you know, them, you know, to higher education and trade yeah. schools. But after they get done, the jobs aren't here for aren't them here. to stay. Right. So. Now, there, there are a good many jobs in our region. Right. They're not specifically in Hampton County. Right. And we'd love to have them back in Hampton County. So. Right. Um, so, I mean, there's been a lot of, you know, been looking at the budget, been looking at, you know, the most recent audit that was done for the past fiscal year. And there have been a lot of cuts in the budget to essential services, the services that the residents need. Correct. Um, you know, as a citizen, how, how has that affected y'all? Well, we, I get a lot of calls about delays in in the uh, transportation of patients, that sort of thing. Uh, it's affecting people seriously. Uh, the words got out that the sheriff's budget's being cut, uh, and criminals see those things too, and so they know the sheriff's not that the sheriff deputies are not out there patrolling like we need them to. We've got to find a way to to fund those essential services, even at the cost of things we want to be done. Right. Those things have to come first. Right. Above all else. Right. And the most recent budget, there were fairly substantial cuts. There is. And I'm very concerned about it. I've worked to get some funding here for our police. Uh, I've helped several towns with uh, funding for some equipment they need. Uh, we've got two uh, new police stations that are going to be built with state funding. So I'm working to bring some funds in here. But the county's got to do their part too. Right, right. And we can't depend on the state to fund everything. So right. we've got to we've got to work towards economic development. And I like I said, I've been on the SCA board. I've been on the EDC here in Hampton for many years. And we'll bring a project, and the 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 county council has been basically the same folks over and over again. You know, a few new faces, but most of it's the same folks. And every time we get a project, it get to the county council approval level, and something would go wrong. There would be in, infighting. They couldn't get along with. They couldn't. Wouldn't agree to the tax incentives. Something would happen, and the projects would never come. And so we've got to get more cooperation within our county council to to work on these projects, so that the the people that come here see that. We are really interested. Um, I put together a meeting yesterday with some things going on with a project instantly. We, we got everybody together within an hour to talk to some folks. And that's the kind of thing we've got. We got to react very quickly because these folks are looking all over the country, all over the world. And if we don't react very quickly to their needs, then they're somewhere else. They, they're not going to waste their time. And so we've, that's that's where we've got to be very proactive and very quickly react to their needs. Has it been, I mean, I was telling Maggie um, when I was speaking with her, I've been really impressed at how the community has stepped up, how they yep. have seen, seen the problems and really stepped up and gotten involved, um, you know, and they, even just the special election last night, the turnout numbers were surprising for a special yep. election. Our folks, our folks are out there working hard to get people to get out and vote. Uh, we uh, we're seeing improved numbers, and that's what it's going to take. It'll take citizens involved. We have uh, eleven thousand registered voters in this county, and if we get three or four thousand in a general election, uh, we're lucky, and that's the voter apathy that we've got to fix because you can't make changes if the same people vote for the same people every time. 
Right. And, uh, we, we need some new leadership. And uh, my, my election was a historic event. Even the day of the election, they were telling them, I was being told, you'll never get elected here. You'll never get elected here. And, and already we could see from the poll numbers and things that probably was going to be elected. And I'm just kind of laughing under my breath that, well, we're going to see something different tomorrow. And now we've done it with uh, Councilwoman Knox, yes. and we're glad to have her on board, and we're going to continue to make some more changes. So. Yes, it has been it's been very um, uplifting to watch. Actually, yeah. I mean, it's there are hard circumstances, but you know, it really is just a, a great community of people. Everybody is friendly. Everybody is, you know, looks out for each other. So I've really enjoyed watching, and you know, even just watching the county council meetings and the public comments. You know, yep. part of them. Yep. People are speaking up. They're using their voices. They're asking those questions. And you know, I think I mean that goes nationwide. You really do have to get involved in elections mm -hmm. and politics at your local level to see the changes. Well, when I got elected, I uh, I knew the county had serious financial issues, so I went in and cut the delegation budget that the county had to pay. Uh, immediately, I, I let the the delegation, the the person overseeing the office, go, uh, and I gave the county that break on that money about fifty thousand dollars that they didn't have to pay. So I I ran the delegation office with the help of volunteers such as Maggie, and uh, and we made it work without the funding. And so we've got to look for other opportunities to do the same thing. Right. What can we do that we can? What can we do with volunteers and people willing to step up that we don't have to spend money to do? And right. so we need to find more opportunities like that. Right. I mean, the forensic audit that the county was going to pay for yep. needed to be done. Right. Um, and you know, got it funded so, through the state budget. Right. And and I want to make it real clear: it's really not funding that forensic audit. It's a proviso in the budget to require the state auditor to do the audit. Right. So the money is, there's not technically money, it's they're using leftover money that the auditor already had right. to do the audit. And so uh, we, we got it done, we, we've, uh, it's approved, the governor signed it, and so the, uh, the auditor, state auditor and the IG are now interviewing companies. They started last week interviewing uh, audit companies to try to pick one to do the audit. Uh, the uh, the cost is probably going to be two hundred and fifty thousand to the state unless they find some really big rabbit hole to go down. It's going to take a lot of time, but that's what we're expecting about two hundred fifty thousand dollars out of the state budget to handle that audit, uh, and it'll be independent of any oversight from the county, it will be totally independent and the state will handle it completely. So we're not funding the, the county audit, we're funding a state audit, forensic audit. And we'll go 2015 to current in every department, in every receipt, every piece of paper that's been, something's been paid out. So it'll be a very deep dive into the county finances. And we may finally find out where the money was spent. I don't, I don't personally think there was any intentional fraud. I just think there was misspent money, uh, maybe some entitlements that uh, folks thought they were entitled to spend money on that they shouldn't have. And we may find, we may find some fraud, but I think the majority of the money was just misspent on projects that maybe shouldn't have been done. Right, projects that weren't necessarily allocated and weren't necessarily necessary in our financial situation right so. so do you think are you hopeful you'll find answers i believe we will i really do um, uh, the audit the state auditor has done this for other counties uh, they found a lot of information in i think allendale and bamber i think they've done them all over the state so it's nothing new they're right. used to doing it and we'll get the uh, state house, the state senate, the IG, the AG, and, and the county will get a report as to what they find. And so uh, 
the uh, if there's any fraud, the, of course, SLED will begin and will investigate. Okay. And it, we may we already got a couple investigations going on, so hopefully this will help move those forward to completion from whatever we find. Right, right. Well, it's been great talking to you today. I really appreciate your time. Glad to be here. Yeah, and, and um, hopefully we'll stay in touch as you know everything starts moving along and Miss uh, Councilwoman yeah, Knox gets that's in office. A great thing. We, uh, I hope to. Uh, I, of course, I'm running again, but I hope uh, I enjoy representing the folks. It's it's a whole lot more than I anticipated. Yeah, uh, with especially with four counties involved, it's. Uh, it gets to be quite interesting. That's a some lot of, the of similar, some of the similar things going on all around. So right, right. So glad to be here and, and glad to add my experience and knowledge to the county to help it move forward. Thank you so much. Thank you.